what your immediate thoughts after that? And with with two nil, is it the challenge quite a big one now, or does the door still feel open for the second leg? I think both I think it's a big challenge. Of course, team of the quality of Real Madrid, but the door is open. It's up to us whether we want to kick it open further next week or, or not. Um, that's my immediate thought. I think there's a, there's a mixed emotion about the game. I think uh, for a big for the period of eleven men, um, we were in the game and we had some chances. And I think we can do better. And I think I've been here a short time, and there are definitely things I think that we can utilise our strengths better, especially with the system of the wing backs. We can be more urgent in, in giving a problem with that. So that's, those are things for myself and the staff and the players to work on, because I could because I could see opportunity there tonight in ways that we didn't quite take. Um, spirit at the end of the game, great. Ten men here for half an hour, like you understand that a lot of things could happen, and that. And I don't think we gave them lots of lots and lots of great chances. So I I like that part of it, and we have to believe. I need to be the first one that believes that this is possible. Gentlemen on the left. Good night, Mr. Lampard. You Hi. went with five up the, at the back tonight. Was that design and build to try to make it difficult for Vinicius? And what did you think about his performance? Um, it, partly the reason. I think we have. Uh, I had different things to consider. Vinicius 1v1 is a big problem for any team. And um, so we wanted to, to, to be able to create 2v1 on that side of the pitch. Obviously, it didn't help getting a yellow card for Fofana so early. It makes you nervous about that. But he's a player that, you know, he's very difficult to control. So that was part of the thinking. And, and with the back five, you want to not be a back five as much as you can. Um, and, and we tried to enforce that, but sometimes Madrid will always take you to that. Um, and then when we had the ball, we want to be a three and we want to use the width and the pitch. Uh, and as I sort of mentioned there, I think we could have done that a bit better. I think it was a it was a weapon for us to use today. We could get the ball out of pressure and get it to the size. I think we can do that more. Um, but in terms of the system, the, the thinking was very clear on that, yeah, to, to deal with their threats, but also to give us an in-possession control of the game, which I think we could have got more of, if I'm honest. Gary? Frank, you've known many special magical nights at Stamford Bridge. Carlo Angelotti says at 2-0 the the tie's not over. Do, do, do you, the players and the fans, need to believe there could be another special night? Absolutely. If you don't believe in, in top-level sport, I don't think there's, there's things will go your way. That's that's a percentage of, of the game, is a, is a mindset and a belief. Um, and the fans will. The fans will come and support us. You know, we're, we're realists. We're 2 down against Real Madrid. That, that's fact now. That's done. Um, but I've been involved, as you say, in games that change. Um, we, we're in a a different place now and maybe that's a good thing because we're in a place where we want to prove some things wrong to change the tone to change the story and um, you know we went tonight with 10 men against Real Madrid it's a difficult night for the lads so I see that they're disappointed in the end but I also saw that they gave everything in that final part of the game but it'll be different next week and you know they're in, we're not favourites we were not favourites yesterday and we're not favourites today um, that's football and um, the possibilities are ours if we can take them Gentlemen on the right Good evening. I would like to ask what's the mindset you have for the second leg and what can you say about Diego Felix match? Thank you. I think um, the game for Raheem and, and Jao Felix was a, was a tough match. In the, the system we played defensively, um, they have to put a lot of work and their, their main threat can sometimes be counter-attack or protecting the ball. Um, and it was a difficult night, I think, for us at the top end of the pitch. But Jao is a, is a big talent, and uh, as does Raheem. So I'm not here to, to, to criticise or comment too much. We'll go away and analyse that side of it. In terms of the second game, we've got a long 90 minutes of football. So I think our approach has to be a balanced one. I don't think you can play without balance against Real Madrid with their attacking uh, threats. Um, but we also have, an, have to have an extra urgency in our game to have a feeling that we can, uh, and an idea of how we can be more forceful with our game at Stamford Bridge. The fans will help, the atmosphere will help, but also our job in the meantime is to, to prepare the team as well as we can to, to turn the game. But we have 90 minutes, not the first 10 minutes, we have 90 minutes to try and turn it. Done. Frank, you've said you think there's a lack of belief and that's perhaps why we might see the, the run without goals. I just wondered what practical, realistic things can you actually do over the next week to, to change that with players um, and, and the squad as a whole? I get that question a lot and um, my first feeling is uh, is work on the training pitch but 
when I consider the work that we do, we work a lot in the the last third, you know, in terms of finishing and crosses and and the idea of how we want to get in the box. So I think that's pretty clear. I don't think we can go much further than what we do with that. The last bit is sometimes confidence, and uh, you know, that's a, maybe that's an individual thing or a team confidence. So I think I'd probably come back to the work side of it there. And uh, if you work and keep going, and something can change, you know, Mason's chance at the end might go in, and this, this tie feels completely different. In the early parts of the game, we might get a goal, which gives the, the whole ninety minutes a different feel. So continue to work, speak to the players. No, no player that want, doesn't want to score a goal. If you know what I mean, players are, they they do want to. So sometimes they need support, confidence, and push in a positive way. And uh, you know, not not just before next week. It's my job to the end of the season because it's been happening um, and I come into this so my job is to try and address it as well as I can Okay, we've got time for two more we'll go to the gentleman there and then finish it Hola Lampard, Jose Padilla de... Jose Padilla in England they're questioning a lot the second goal the one from Asensio because the defence was not defending everyone's in the back do you believe it was a tactical issue or just that the team did not respond properly in the defence yeah, it, uh, it was not a tactical issue it was a, um, a not switching on issue, not being focused in the moment. Um, if you look, if you watch back the goal, which I have, we were not um, we were not ready like we should have been. We're one man down, but from a set piece, you still have to to control the basics, and that's a disappointment because I don't think Real Madrid created a big, big number of chances in that that period with ten men. So a set piece, we shouldn't concede for sure. Frank. On uh, on your right, here here first row first ah, row here. Gotcha. Yes, you you mentioned that the uh, second leg match in uh, Stamford Bridge will be a challenge for uh, for the club. It will be a challenge also regarding your future in the club. I don't I don't know because I don't think one game specifically is going to change my future. I'm here for a period of time to the end of the season. It's been pretty clear. And I, I took this job under that idea. And I understand it completely. So I think the, the things that happen in between, I'm not thinking, oh, what might happen in May or in June? I'm thinking, what can I control now? So I don't, I don't see it that way. I get, I'll, I'll get asked that question a lot in the next six weeks. But generally, in my mind, I'm here for this period. After that, we'll see. OK, we'll end it there. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Cheers, all. Thank you. La palabra que puede definir el arbitraje español en estos momentos es de descomposición. Después de años donde ha habido demasiada corrupción. Y o actúan o esto se va al garete. El fútbol español. Y ahí están los responsables. En la Liga, en la Federación y en los equipos de fútbol. Pero lo que se ha vivido durante estos años se define como una auténtica vergüenza. Y el arbitraje español vive una descomposición total. Y la desconfianza de los aficionados tiene motivaciones muy serias. Enríquez Negreira no ha tenido incidencia cero en las designaciones de árbitro, en las competencias de los árbitros, en los ascensos o descensos de los árbitros y en nada de importancia en lo que ha hecho. Dedicaba, a parece ser, o supuestamente el tiempo a otras cosas. Luego la gol parque de Malmatí a la sisa de agafar un avión eh, para nada cap a Madrid para designar los árbitros de la próxima jornada. Si se puede, sí. Si se puede. Eh.